Okay guys, so I'm just going to start off by sewing the closure onto the cap just like we would do a frontal. You start off with the closure as well. So you're just going to watch me sew this all the way around. I try to do tight stitches when it comes to closures and things like that because you want this to be really secure and fit really snug. You don't want any gaps or anything like that. So make sure you take your time when you sew this closure down. Also, if you notice, I pushed the closure up about a half of inch above the stocking, um, stocking cap, above the dome cap. And my reason for this is, is that when she goes to put the wig on, the closure will fall over the tracks. And this will help for you not to be able to see any tracks. I'm pretty sure all of us have seen closure wigs where you can kind of see those tracks or the tracks meet the closure. And this is because there's not enough hair to cover it up. Well, pushing the closure up just a little helps to make sure that that problem doesn't happen. start sewing the tracks to the dome cap. I am going to use the flip over method for this wig. I know in the last wig I made I cut each track but I am making this wig for a client and so I'm doing the fold over method so that if she did decide she wanted another wig or to take this apart for any other thing she still will have <laughs>
now y'all i was in a rush to do this wig i know y'all see me using these needles to hold my track up i couldn't find my t-pins and i just wanted to get started because i did this at night so don't mind me and my ratchetness <laughs> that's why you see this little extra string here hanging here because it's just connected to the needle i use to hold the track up Okay guys, so now that we're getting closer to the top, we're going to start to shape the tracks in a U-shape, kind of like the closure. And as you can see, I've tied a knot here in the corner and it just helps you be able to turn the track better so that it can make a U instead of kind of curving. Like if you can see, just the knot makes it the track pivot on that point instead of pulling and making the semicircle like the rest of the tracks. track that I'm sewing in right now is going to meet the uh, the closure and I am not sewing this track on the closure I repeat I am NOT sewing it on the closure however I am going to sew it very close to the closure but I do not sew directly on closures or frontals that way if you want to switch out the closure when it starts to bald or frontal or whatever you have the option to do so but I am making sure to get very very close without actually piercing the lace okay so you see I've placed a pin here where I want to put my knot so once again, I'm going to go ahead and put a knot where I want to start turning the track. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat that on both sides. And it will just help me to continue the little box that I'm making. Okay guys, so we finally finished constructing the wig and I'm just going to flip this hair over so you can see how it looks as soon as I finished it. Okay, and 
here we are. Now we just have to cut that little middle piece out. All right, so I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut the little square out. I'm remembering to leave about a half inch. It might be a little less than that, but just leave a rim of fabric. Don't cut right next to your stitches because we don't want all of this hard work to get unraveled. Okay, so now I know you guys see this hairline is very, very, very straight, thick all the way to the front. So I'm just going to take my tweezers and I'm going to pluck this closure like it's a frontal, just so that it could look as natural as possible when um, my customer puts it on. She did say that she does not want a lot of plucking, so I'm not going to go overboard, but I am going to make sure that this front line is not so perfect. If you want to see an in-depth detail on how I pluck this, I will be uploading a separate video on that. But for right now, I'm just going to kind of show you guys a little bit what I did, but not start to finish. So now that I finished plucking the wig, I'm just taking some Silk Infusion by Chi and rubbing it all throughout the hair before I begin styling it. I always recommend putting a heat protectant product on hair before you flat iron it just because, you know, you don't want to damage the hair. So now that I'm done flat ironing, I'm just going to go in with my hot comb and begin to get the hair as flat as possible. I know you see how the hair kind of falls forward. I'm just going to take my hot comb and kind of brush it back so that we can see the plucking that we just did. I hope you guys can tell the, um, the difference between how the frontal looked in the beginning and how it looks now. Now I'm just going in with a little mousse. You can use any mousse that you have, any styling mousse. And I just use that to get rid of flyaways on the hair and to hold everything in place. Okay guys, just repeat those steps until you get your desired look. I hope that you can tell the difference between the closure before I plucked it and now. Remember that my client, she didn't want me to bleach the knots here, so as you can see, the knots aren't bleached, but I am going to go in with my airbrush legs and I'm going to tint the lace. Um, if you want to see how I do that, I will leave a link to that video um, at the end as well, but yeah. Sorry for the background noise, but I just wanted to show you how the closure unit turned out. Okay, see, it's 
nice and plucked. These are the little baby hairs or whatever. I'm gonna slip it on for you right quick. See how you, so you can see how it looks. But as you can see, it's really, really flat. And like I said, I just threw some loose curls in here just because. And one second while I show you guys how it looks on. But I told you that this closure is going to look like a frontal. Hey guys. Okay, I know I look crazy, but fun fact, um, when I have wigs with clips in it and stuff, I take the stocking cap and I cut the middle of it out. It's kind of like a headband. That way I can still stick the clips in my braids if I have some, and but I can still get this part for my part. But um, I'm about to try on that closure wig that I made. So this is how it turned out. I put some little soft curls in it, has a middle part. I told you my goal was to make this look like a frontal. So normally you see bands around the back of the wig. I put it up here because we need it to pull this closure tight. Normally you put it at the end of the frontal, but this is not a frontal, so you're gonna put it at the ends of the closure here so you have a little more band than normal but this wig actually fits without this this is just like extra precaution because my client asked for it so first you're going to take your band and put it around your head okay see around your head then take the wig put it over the back of your head all right flip it up <laughs> now we're just going to take the front of the wig and gently pull that forward okay if you have baby hairs comb down your baby hairs I have some light ones here for her let me take my ear pull it out do that on this side okay and this is the unit. <sighs> so, yes, um, I really like it. I like it a lot. It makes me want a closure, but I just wanted to quickly show you guys just how it turned out and how this part looks. Cause this is a closure. It's a life with Lauren Ashley. It's the life with Lauren Ashley.